In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option. Coming to you courtesy of Immaculate Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. Uh, if you like our work, uh, perhaps you might hit the subscribe button. Uh, support us on Patreon or PayPal. We will be so grateful for your prayers. And uh, your comments are also greatly valued. So, today, another science fiction film, Gattaca. Uh, Gattaca, 1997, came to Ireland in 98. It's science fiction without special effects. It is, in a sense, a play. It's heavily theatrical. It's beautifully done. Beautifully conceived. Beautifully acted. I can't recommend this film too strongly. On foot of my last review, which was of Blade Runner, it's understated, elegant, highly intelligent and highly emotive at the same time. A beautiful, um, more of an emphasis maybe on, uh, let's say, costumes. Uh, it offsets not futuristic, but very modern film sets, modern office film sets, um, some beautiful modern buildings. It offsets those with a very, very deliberately retro 1950s clothing styles. A lot of double-breasted suits, a lot of slouch hats, fedoras. Uh, the FBI in the film are known as the Hoovers. They wear grey Homburgs. It's it's very moody film. But it contains a few absolutely superb performances. One of them by the lead role, Ethan Hawke, young Ethan Hawke. Very restrained, elegant performance from Uma Thurman as his lover. A, a, a guest performance from, from the classic American actor Ernest Borgnine. And the great Jude Law, also an excellent performance as the, the wounded athlete. It is a study in human value, human worth, and human ambition as a function of human worth and a reflection of it. That's my stab at it. It's set in a futuristic world. It's basically dystopian. The subgenre of science fiction it belongs to is, I think, biopunk which is very much related to a um, uh, kind of dystopian view of the developments in, in biotechnology. And in this future world, uh, eugenics have been taken to an extraordinary level to the extent that human beings are being very selectively bred. It kind of is much closer to Aldous Huxley's novel, Brave New World, his 1920s novel, Brave New World, than to George Orwell's 1984. Much closer to Brave New World. People aren't exactly bred, as Huxley foretold, in, in hierarchically ordered uh, streams and a caste system, A, B, C, D, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. No, it's, it's actually much more subtle than that. Uh, there is no discrimination permitted. And there are actually laws against it. But in fact, the whole society conspires to discriminate against those who are so-called God children or are naturally born without scientific interference, naturally born of their parents, without modification, without design, without planning. And so Vincent Freeman, Vincent is the first child. He's a God child. And he is a heart tremor. And he's not going to live long. His brother, the parents decide not to, to take that chance again. And they go to a, a eugenicist who tells them, 
it's really the way you need to think of it he says is that it's the best of both of you you know and so his brother is born as a result of very selective and very carefully monitored uh, breeding using using the chromosomes of both parents his 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 brother is born with absolutely superb health high intelligence the whole bit the older brother is cursed with a driving ambition as a boy to excel his brother which is nearly impossible and then later on to get to work for Gattaca. Now Gattaca is actually an acronym based on the, the DNA helix, but, but let's not go into that. Gattaca is the firm. It's, it's like the Tyrell Corporation and Blade Runner. Gattaca is the place you want to go to to work if you want to uh, work on, on distant planets. It is the only way uh, to, to, to be an ast astronaut to get to that. You have to have uh, fantastic health and superior intelligence. The director of Gattaca is brilliantly played in a cameo role, and this harkens back to Cyril Cusick in The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, brilliantly played by no less a person than the novelist Gore Vidal, who plays the director brilliantly. Vincent decides to become an astronaut. And there is a way in that society to do it. It has mastered, it has, it has brought DNA tests to a fine art. So it's nearly impossible because corporations will do these tests on anything they can get off you, even a rib of hair. It is almost impossible to get in because they will stop you if they discover that you're an invalid or a godchild, that you're in some way flawed. But he discovers a way to do it. He has the intelligence, he has the ambition, he has the application, but he doesn't have the health. So he, is, he has to get a surrogate and I highly recommend another cameo performance by the truly seedy person who comes to visit him. Um, somebody who, who specialises in these uh, fake identities. And what you have to do is get somebody to provide you with all of the stuff, including urine, everything, which will satisfy the innumerable tests that will be done while you're in Gattaca. So you have to get somebody who has a perfect DNA profile. A perfect genealogical profile to substitute for your own. And the process is absolutely punishing. He, they match him up with an athlete who has broken his back, but the accident happened out of the country and nobody knows about it. He was an Olympic swimmer, played by Jude Law. And he needs the money and Vincent needs to get into Gattaca. He says um, he, he could run through a wall. He's practically going to live forever. An absolutely fantastic physique, superb health, absolutely first class mind. And there is no limit to what he has to do to do this. He has to carefully monitor himself. He, he has to he has to scrape himself all over every morning with pumice stone because they're constantly testing your workstation and you can't afford to leave even a, a faint piece of skin dust on your computer, on your computer keypad. Anything. Uh, not an eyelash can come loose. Not a rib of hair. You must comb and comb every morning. He wears a prosthetic, how will I put it? Let's be delicate about this. He wears a prosthetic in AB, there are regular urinary tests, and he wears a prosthetic which, is, uh, which enables him, he has a bag of your man's urine strapped to the inside of his thigh, which enables him to give a false test. He has false pads on his finger pads, 
which are immaculately blended in with the rest of his finger. And these are pads of this guy's blood. The, the service the, the company, the CD illegal company provide is just amazing. There's just one remaining problem. Uh, the athlete is two inches, I think, taller than him. And he has to have an absolutely horrible operation in order to get around this. It's it's uh, the extent of his determination. Um, the the, uh, the your horror when you realize what he's going to have to do. The man who suggests it to him just looks at him and raises an eyebrow, because it's clear what has to be done. And all you hear is the whine of the saw, the bone saw. And he just says at the end, and the whole thing is so controlled and understated. Um, Jerome never questioned my commitment again. It turns out that his older brother has become a police detective. Somebody's killed in the company. The police are all over the place. The man who looks like he has almost got to the point at which they're ready to send him up into space. And the man who's going to bring all his dreams crashing down is his detective brother, who's starting to suspect that he is his long lost older brother. It's, it's excellent. I do suggest that you watch it. When they were boys, the older brother, who's the invalid, he races his perfect younger brother, swimming. And he actually beats him which is absolutely remarkable. And the, I think is the next day he runs away, never goes back to his family. At the very end, he suggests a race to his brother again. And they do it again. And he beats him again. They just about managed to get back to land. And he says to him, do you know how I beat you the first time? I've never left anything for the way back. So the whole film is what I love about it is 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 the way it, it walks on the edge. It's feline, like a cat. It walks on the edge. It depicts somebody who's on the edge the whole time. He's a model of calm and cool, but he doesn't belong where he is. Now, do you see where I'm going with this, Cinecats? Because this is where we are. The guy turns up for work every morning, immaculate in his double-breasted 1950s style suit, walking peacefully, calmly, almost like a monk, with his hands behind his back. I suppose a monk wouldn't do that. And yet every second is lived on the edge. At any minute he can be discovered and end up in prison. Gattaca, I recommend it to you. A study in the human spirit, a study of human worth, a study in just the human. Science fiction at its understated best. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.